Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Most of the time, you can easily format your shapes using the tools that are available on the Drawing Tools contextual tab. However, for advanced options, you may want to access the Format Auto Shape dialog box. For upgrading users, you will find that this dialog box hasn't changed very much. This is basically the old version of the Format Pictures dialog box. Unfortunately, while both dialog boxes function in much the same way, some places in Word use one version of this dialog box and other places still use this older version. It's very confusing and there doesn't appear to be any obvious answer as to why this dialog box hasn't been upgraded to the new version when formatting shapes. But in this lesson we'll examine the options available for you to use within this dialog box. You'll find that most of them are very similar to the ones found in the Format Pictures dialog box which we examined in the last chapter. You can access this dialog box by first selecting the shape that you would like to format and then clicking the Format Auto Shape dialog box button in the lower right corner of the Shape Styles group in the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab. This will open the Format Auto Shape dialog box and display the Colors and Lines tab within the dialog box. In the Fill section, you can select the Color drop-down and then select the color that you want to apply from the list of colors shown. Below that, you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency for the color that you desire if you would like to create a semi-transparent color. If you want to apply a fill effect, such as a gradient, you can do that by clicking the fill effects button to open the fill effects dialog box. This dialog box allows you to apply advanced formatting to the fill of the selected shape. In the fill effects dialog box, there are four tabs that allow you to apply the four types of fill effects available gradient, texture, pattern, and picture. If you click the gradient tab, you can see that you can set a gradient as the fill color for the selected shape. At the top of this tab, in the color section, you can select either a one color, two color, or preset gradient. If you select a one color gradient, then you'll have to select a color from the drop down that appears, and then select whether to mix it with black or white from the black and white slider that appears, and you just slide it towards dark or light. Now if you select a two color gradient, then you have to select which two colors to mix from the drop downs that appear. If you choose preset, then you must select from one of the many preset gradients that come installed. Below that, you can create a gradient transparency effect from one side of the gradient to the other by using the From and To sliders in the Transparency section. After selecting what type of gradient to create, you then have to select a shading style from the many listed in the lower left corner. Next, pick a specific variant of the selected style from the one shown in the Variants section. You should see your selected choice shown in the Sample section in the lower right corner of this dialog box. You could also select the Texture tab and use one of the available textures as the fill for the selected shape. When you click the Texture tab, you will see many different types of textures that you can click on to select as the fill color for the selected shape. If you click the Pattern tab, you can select which two colors you want as the foreground and background colors of the pattern that appear at the top of the tab. Then just select the pattern that you want to use from the listing of patterns shown. Once again, you should see your choice in the sample in the lower right hand corner. On the Picture tab, you can click the Select Picture command to open the Select Picture dialog box. Here you can use the available navigation to select the picture that you want to apply as the background of your object. Once you see the image that you would like to apply, select it 
and click insert to then display it in the picture tab. You should also see it once again as shown in the sample. Now once you have your selected fill effect, just click the OK button and that will return you back to the Colors and Lines tab within the Format Auto Shape dialog box. Back in the Format Shape dialog box, you have a line section with the following drop downs that are available. Color, which allows you to set the color of the line the same way that you did with Fill Color. Style, which allows you to select the line style, like single, double, thick, thin. Dashed, which allows you to select a dash style for dashed or dotted lines. And weight, which allows you to set the thickness in points of the line border. In the arrows section of this tab, which is only available for, select, for selected lines or arrow shapes, you can use the Begin Style drop-down to select the style of starting point for the line or arrow, and then you can use the Begin Size drop-down below that to select a size of the starting point. Likewise, you use the End Style drop-down and the End Size drop-down to set the appearance of the end of the line or arrow shape. Notice that there are more tabs in the Format Auto Shape dialog box than just the Colors and Lines tab. Next, we'll look at the options available on the Size tab. If you click this tab, you can see here that you can use the options available in the Height, Width, Rotate, and Scale sections to apply the settings to your selected shape. If you check the Lock Aspect Ratio checkbox, that ensures that when you increase or decrease the height, that the width will also adjust accordingly, and vice versa. On the Layout tab, you can select a desired text wrapping style from the choices shown in the Wrapping Style section. You can also choose a horizontal alignment to use from the choices available in that section. On the Alt Text tab, you can enter layered. This isn't as important as labeling your images when designing web pages in Word, but you can certainly add a description to the shape if needed. Unlike the newer version of this dialog box, changes that you make are not applied as you actually make them. In this dialog box, you only apply the settings once you click the OK button. If you change your mind about your changes after you've made them, you can click the Cancel button to cancel your changes without applying them. Otherwise, you can just use Undo. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.